today we are going to look into the poem the abandoned british cemetery at balasore india written by jayanta mahapatra jayanta mahapatra is an indian english poet and he was born on 22nd october 1928 in kutak and has lived in orissa all his life hence orissa is a part of his being the place mentioned in this poem that is balasore is also in orissa This poet is also the first Indian poet to win a Sahitya Akademi award for English poetry. Now speaking about this poem, it deals with the author's reflections on entering a cemetery in which a number of British people were buried about 150 years back. A number of British people died due to the outbreak of cholera in Balasore. And this cemetery is now deserted and abandoned. This poem consists of 10 stanzas with four lines each. So for the ease of explanation I am dividing this poem into three parts, three stanzas, three stanzas and four stanzas. So first let's look into the first three stanzas of this poem. It goes like this. This is history. I would not disturb it. The ruins of stone and marble, the crumbling wall of brick, the coma of alienated decay. How exactly should the archaic dead make me behave? A hundred and fifty years ago, I might have lived. Now, nothing offends my ways. A quietness of bramble and grass holds me to a weed. Will it matter if I know who the victims were, who survived? And yet, awed by the forgotten dead, I walk around them thirty-nine graves. Their legends floating in a twilight of baleful littoral. the flaking history my intrusion does not animate so the poet starts the poem by saying that it is a history then he starts to describe the cemetery how it looks he says he will not disturb it that place there are ruins of stones and marble crumbling wall of brick and coma of alienated decay this coma of alienated decay shows the presence of death there then he asks a question that how should he behave or what are the dead expecting from him he used the word archaic dead archaic are called for so old things so it shows how much years ago the incident has happened or the people have died then in the second stanza he says that 150 years ago he might have lived anyway there is no problem in his way today Then the quietness of bramble and grass holds him to a weed that speaks about the calm surroundings of that cemetery. Then again he asks a question that can he know who the victims were and who survived the disaster. In the third stanza he is saying that he is walking through the 39 graves he thinks about other legends in that history too. So that's all about this portion. Now let's get into the fourth stanza. Awkward in the silence, a scrawny lizard watches the drama with its shrewd hooded gaze, and a scorpion, its sting drooping, two airy arms spread upon the marble over an alien name. In the circle, the epitaph runs: Florence R, darling wife of Captain R, aged nineteen of cholera; Helen, beloved daughter of Mr. and Mrs. J. S. White. of cholera aged 17 in the year of our lord 1800 of what concern to me is some vanished empire or the conquest of my ancestors timeless in you it is the dying young who have the power to show what the hurt will hide the grass shows no more here he says that in the silence a lizard is watching the drama For a lizard, a person coming near the tombstones and reading the inscriptions may be felt like a drama, as that place is abandoned and nobody comes there. It's a haunting place, a lonely place. Then he also mentions about a scorpion. Then he says that two strange arms touches a marble with an alien name. It is actually his hands touching the tombstones. Then he reads on what is written on the tombstones. The details of the dead ones are given. and he reads out that with their age and all and that makes us understand that most of them have died young then he says that what matters for him is about the vanished empire and the conquest of his ancestors 
the young ones has the power to show what is inside the hurt now the grass cannot the young ones are no more that make him so sad a group of young people have passed away from the details written on the tombstones we can understand that most of them are young people those british people have just come to india to die so young so it's so sad now let's get into the last part of the poem who watches now in the dark near the dead wall the tribe of grass in the cracks of my eyes it is the cholera still death's sickly trickle that plagues the sleepy shacks beyond this hump of earth moving easily swiftly with quick power through both past and present the growing young into the final bone wearing all truth with ruin this is the iron rusting in the vanquished country the blood's unease the useless rain upon my unfamiliar window the tired triumphant smile left behind by the dead on a discarded anchor half sunk in mud beside the graves out there on the earth's unwavering gravity where it waits like a deity perhaps for the elaborate ceremonial of a coming generation to keep history awake stifle the survivors issuing cry In this stanza he speaks about the deadly disease he says that it is still there hidden and watching everything it is waiting for more people to come the disease is still taking lives the disease is mentioned here as something living it is moving slowly still taking the lives of young ones it is strong as iron it is rusting in the defeated or vanquished country means still it is working it is like a useless rain it is not ending the dead smile triumphantly with the knowledge that their generations are not going to be spared by this disease earth unwavering gravity depicts that the earth as it attracts all things to it due to gravity it waits for the death also it waits for the dead body as the dead ones will be buried under the earth it is depicted as a gravity it waits like a goddess for the death ceremony of coming generations or the cholera waits like a goddess for the death ceremony of coming people so that's all about the meaning of this poem so explaining this poem will lose its beauty explaining this poem without losing the beauty of the poem is something uh, not possible so this poem shows jayanta mahapatra's poetic craft he uses images from reality to express his tragic vision he's a beautiful poet so that's all about today's video thank you for watching